Are we ready for this? Show them how... That was tougher than I would have liked. Stone. It's... It's just a rock. Take it if you want. I think it's really rare. The way it sparkles. I think it might even be bright steel. Bright steel? Never heard of it. Yeah, it's actually a rare metal used to forge weapons and stuff. You don't find it just anywhere. If there's bright steel here, that means we must be in either Endgand or Islegand. Both are a long ways off from Midgand. I doubt the Abbey has many people stationed out here. That's our pirate! Arr! Here there be treasures shiny and sentries few! At the very least, this could mean we'll be left alone for a while. Nice find, Luffy said. Thanks! Now wash your hands. Okay. Uh, 
The only way to learn where we are is to find someone to ask, I guess. What's eating you, Laffy said? If people say you can't judge women at face value, does that mean you can with men? Sure. Men are simple creatures. Men are simple. Oh! You talk like you're an expert in all things masculine. But you can only speak for your own family. As if you're one to judge. And I'm sure you've charmed a magnificent lord to be your lover. Sure. What does he look like? Is he tall? None of your business. Don't tell me. He was always on the other side of a swinging door, so you only saw his feet? <gasps> I see. What a lovely crush that must be. I read that story. It was a book called The Legs of a Man. Oh? I've never heard of it. I've read it too. It's a sad, bittersweet tale. But I enjoyed it quite a lot. I highly recommend it if you haven't read it. Maybe when I have some free time after killing Artorias. <sighs> <laughs> I just wanted to know if men could be judged at face value. It's not often you find bright steel above ground. I hear it's a lot of trouble to unearth, even in the regions it's normally found. Yeah. Mining for minerals takes a lot of specialized techniques and experience on the part of the prospector. They examined the soil, the water, the plants, and so on, where the same mineral was found before. Then searched similar environments for the next big find. Sure, but it's not like they succeed every time. It's all a big gamble. Isn't there a simpler way? I read in a book once that you can use a pendulum to find water and metals underground. It's called dousing. What's dousing? You hang the pendulum so it's facing the ground. Then you chant the magic word, Magic Kazam, and wait to be amazed. The little bit of ore on its tip will sniff out buried treasure in underground lakes like a bloodhound on a prickle boar. You don't seriously believe this. Eh, it's just like fortune telling. You win some, you lose some. That's why they call it prospecting. So, if pendulums are used for fortune telling, why the hell is Zavid running around using them as weapons? He uses wind to control its trajectory. I think it's easier for him to manipulate pendulums in a fight than something like a whip or a rope. Oh, that makes sense now. That seems pretty clever. He's probably also doing it to make himself stronger, too. Malakim broadly fall into four elemental types. Earth, water, wind, and fire. Each strong or weak against the others. Wind beats Earth. Savid is a wind Malak. So when he obtains Earth element minerals, his own strength is boosted. I never realized Malakim could be so calculating. Then if pendulums react to a Moloch's powers, maybe they can actually do this dousing stuff like Magilu says. Yeah, it's worth taking that thing seriously. Zavid might like to joke around, but when it comes to fighting, he knows full well just what he's doing. He puts an awful lot of thought into that weapon of his, if you ask me. You don't? I spare all my thoughts for my sweetheart. Yeah, right. You just like to cause trouble without putting much thought into anything. You there. Got a moment? Are you guys with the sword breaker? The what? G get away from me! Got you! Too long. No escape! Got I'm sorry, alright? We're class act. Attacking as you apologize. Got you! 
Mighty demon, I beg you! I'll do anything! Just spare me! I only wanted to ask you something. You don't have to worry. This woman here is an exorcist. Huh? R right. I'm Eleanor, a Praetor exorcist. Please, remain calm and hear our questions. You do look like an exorcist, but... What are you doing with ruffians like these? Top secret Abbey business. That's all I can say. Now, can you tell us where we are? And are there any ports nearby? You don't know? You're on Cadnix Island in Islegant. The port is at the other end of that ravine. I'll send a Sylph Jade to the Von Eltia. Thanks. One more question. Who's this sword breaker? Ah, he's a demon. Causes lots of trouble around these parts. He only attacks sword fighters, and he breaks their blades. He's even taken down a number of Praetors. Hence the name Swordbreaker. He wields a fine sword, clearly forged in a foreign land. I tried to find his lair to steal the weapon for myself. But that's when I was attacked. A foreign sword? I'd be careful if I were you. If he spots that sword on your back, <laughs> you'll be in a world of trouble. Sounds like a real nasty fellow. Well, he tries to pull anything on this demon, and he's in for one munchy, crunchy surprise. <laughs> you folks are all crazy. Either way, I'd say this is a blessing in disguise for you. You're lucky to still be alive. Take this chance to abandon your life of crime. Let's find that... Hmm... Can you read any of this old writing? No... I've studied many languages, but I've never seen script like this before. Can you read it, Eleanor? I've never come across this language either. Where did you find a rare tome like this? Um... well... It was a lucky find at the capital. What can I say? The kid loves to read. I was surprised to see how many Malakim like to read. Genfu does a lot of reading too. I didn't know that. It's true. I'm not sure what he's been reading though. Did someone call for me? Bienfu, 
Do you like to read too? Oh, yes! Books are a treasure trove of knowledge! But I'm a greater Malakim, so the literature I enjoy might be a bit above your level, Luffy said. How to talk a human female into becoming your vessel and physically escalating with cuties. Bien? <laughs> physically escalating. What does that mean? You, you really don't, need, don't to need to know. Uh, all right. Yeah, I'm confiscating all of these. And I have some questions. Bien Fu, you better be ready for a thorough interrogation. Bien! <laughs> you look like you're having fun, Rokuro. Well, I'm a Yaksha. A Yaksha? A spirit of war? Yeah, a demon that lives for combat. But this sword breaker has cut down exorcists with its foreign blade. Aren't you scared? Of dying, you mean? Yeah. I'm not afraid of dying. It's more that I'm afraid of not being alive. Huh? Fighting is my life. It's all I want to do. So I fight. That's what living means to me. <sighs> Living only to kill. A demon is always going to be a demon. Well, if you're gonna be blunt. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Are we ready for this? Yeah. 
Recipe. Scout ships.
We will need to be extremely wary. No What's wrong? An enemy. That sword. Is that Stormquell? A demon wielding a foreign made sword. You must be the sword breaker. Let's go! <laughs> <laughs> Not much for conversation, are you? Silence, they say, is only commendable in an ox tongue tried and a maid not vendable. Crusher! Right here! 
Like that? Dark and white. Right. Oh, oh. Fight. Here. No mercy. <laughs> this is it. for conversation, are you? Silence, they say, is only commendable in an ox tongue dried and a maid not bendable. Dark and 
Wait! 
I'll take this one. Come and get me! Good, a challenge! Look out! Don't interfere, brat! What do you think you're doing? Touch him and I'll kill you. Uh, I'm sorry. I just got a little riled up. Do you know that demon? No, but I know his sword. A blade called Stormquell. Stormquell? Whatever. It doesn't have anything to do with us. Let's just get to the portal already. Lafayette said, I'm sorry about what happened back there. I thought he was going to kill you. Yeah, I know. You were just doing what you thought was right. Yeah, maybe so. That's good then. I didn't give you a clear enough warning to stay out of it. If it ever happens again, I'll give you a proper warning. You really don't want me to help you? Even if your life is at risk? Yup. Why? Actually, I'm not too sure myself. Huh? There's somebody out there I need to defeat by my own hand. I want to strike him down. I want to triumph against him. But to do that, I need to be a better swordsman. Someone you have to defeat. In a sword fight, yeah. And I'll do anything to ensure I come out on top in the end. No matter how much it costs me. Life, limb, hell, even my heart and soul, I'll pay it. Those feelings have been so central to me for so long. I lost my dang humanity somewhere along the way. Why do you need to win that badly? <laughs> to be honest, it beats me. Maybe it has to do with me being a demon. Or maybe that's why I became one. Either way, it's more important to me than life itself. More important than life. But still, I owe you for saving me back there. There's no victory pose in store for me if I'm dead. Uh, okay. Is that how you thank someone for saving your life? Huh? I'm just being honest with the little guy. And no offense and all, but why do you care? 
You don't even think it disrespectful? You truly are a demon. Yep. Big old demon. <sighs> I don't think we have a chance! No mercy! Wounds that won't heal! Another victory. Hmm, now why does that name sound so familiar? Hey, Eleanor? Thanks for stepping in earlier. Think nothing of it. My orders are to protect you, so I did. Oh, I see. Of course, orders are no orders. I'd save anyone under threat from a demon. Well, how noble. Oh, I got it! Got, got what? The tragic tale of the sword storm quell. Gather round and listen, oh grimy travelers. Once, centuries past, there was a sword renowned the world over for its peerlessly sharp edge. Its forger shrouded in mystery. So mighty was each swing of the sword, it produced howling winds that could level mountains. No other sword could match its power. The people, in their superstition, began to call it the Godblade. This Godblade... is it Stormquell? Shush! The tale is merely beginning. Now, there was one man who was truly enamored with the Godblade. His name was Kurogane, a blacksmith of wondrous talent. His heart was set on forging an even greater sword. And he had a name in mind for this sword. Stormquell, the sword to conquer the Godblade's roaring winds. And did he make it? Kurogane forged scores of challengers to the Godblade, but each would-be Stormquell was shattered by the implacable howling wind. Some say the wielder of the Godblade chopped off his head. Others say he took his own life. The truth is lost to the dusty cobwebs of history. But perhaps he, and his grudge towards the Godblade, somehow yet live. A grudge that spans centuries. You hear tall tales like this all the time. That sword and its inscription we saw were probably just inspired by the legend. Perhaps. But if that's the real Stormquell, we should all sleep with one eye open tonight. What makes you say that? 
Because that god blade Kudogane wanted so desperately to top has been passed down through my family for generations. Its name is Stormhowl. In other words, we could well bump into your armored friend again. Let's hurry it up. Thank you. 